Right up. Praise the King. Welcome to Believer Central Prophecy Update. I'm Lisa Dennis Sparks, and you're watching Christians United Broadcasting Network, CUBN, where we want to see you be encouraged in Jesus' name. Glory to God. <coughs> a little froggy, but I'm on the mend. I'm fighting a little bit of a headache tonight, so bear with me. We're going to get into the word of God, and we're going to learn some really cool things. But I thought first what we might do is take some frequently asked questions from recent days and see if we can't maybe answer some of your questions too. You're welcome to come into the chat room and ask your questions uh, at BelieversCentralProphecyUpdate.com. Click on live TV and then click on play on the screen in the chat room is directly below the broadcast. So would love to see you come and join us and you're welcome to ask questions. Questions that I've been getting recently is what happened with the star constellation? Was this just a, a fraud? Was it just something that, um, This was this is a very, very important prophetic event, but it doesn't promise to produce the return of Jesus Christ on that day. OK, God always lets his servants know what he's doing before he does it. And that's kind of what this constellation is. If you'll turn over with me to Revelation chapter 12, I'll show you something about this constellation. It is found in verses 1 and 2, okay? And this constellation did appear. It's a So it's a very special, a very special thing. Um, what this did is alert the watchmen so they could align with the timeline. This is not meant to produce the return of the king on the day it appears. Now, it is one of John's stops on his journey through time. And that makes it very important because God brought him forward into the future to our time to show him this constellation and then sent him back, uh, not just the constellation, but this entire alignment and then sent him back to his own time 2,000 years ago to write about it so we would know that it was coming. In our time, we need a fixed point in time and space, and that's what this is. The constellation is a fixed point in time and space, so the watchman can align with the timeline and start warning the people. It's a one-year warning is what it is. The timing it came up, the, it appeared the day after the latest would wrap up. So that is also an indicator that it's not talking about this year. It's talking about the next year. It's a, it's a one-year warning. And so we need to uh, 
take it as that. Don't lose heart because Jesus didn't come uh, when this constellation appeared. He doesn't, we, we have found in study of Bible prophecy uh, over the last many years that when a sign shows up, it doesn't produce what it's indicating on that same day. Uh, there's actually only one seal that produces an effect when it opens, and that would be the sixth seal. It looks like there could be an earthquake, um, and you have a war in heaven, so you have signs, and then it plays itself out over the next six weeks after that until the return of the king. So this constellation is important, but don't uh, don't expect that the Lord was supposed to come on that day, okay? There are so many biblical criteria that have to be fulfilled prior to his return. We've already been able to disqualify all of 2017. And I've noticed that people have been coming out with more and more dates, you know, October this and that. Believe the evidence, okay? And the math doesn't lie. Believe the evidence. We have evidence of when the Lord is returning. And that's what I do. I do evidence and scripture, uh, data, science, things I can prove. So we're not going to just, uh, you know, sit on some mountaintop with no clue whatsoever waiting for the Lord. That's not watching. He's not telling you to get your lawn chair out and sit in your yard and look at the sky. What he's saying is study. Look at the geopolitical situation in the world. Monitor current events. Match them all up with the prophecies. That's how you watch. That's the only way I know to watch. Only way I know how to watch, and that's what we do. Um, we, I have studied many, many years, over 30 years. I've learned the prophecies. I've studied the very fluid geopolitical situation in the world. I monitor current events and I attempt to match the two up. And once we got Daniel's equation solved, we were able to build the timeline. So this is very, very cool times that we're living in where God is unsealing this information that's been sealed since the time of Daniel. It's amazing. I'm, I'm really uh, so excited to see these things materialize. The next thing that we're looking at is the seven year treaty. Well, possibly. And the reason I say possibly is because there is a possibility of war on a, um, let me, how would I put this? There is the possibility of a limited nuclear exchange in the world prior to the treaty. And we do expect the treaty by the end of the year. Um, the math says we're going to have a temple by next July that it may still be under construction, but it'll be defiled. And um, that's what the math lead to 2018. And I have tried and tried and tried to fault this theory and I haven't been able to do it, but I'm still working on it. <laughs> I'm still trying, but we won't have to wait until September, 2018 to find out if my theory is correct, because, um, if there is no treaty and no plans to rebuild the temple, uh, by March, you know, 2018, then it, there's no way it can materialize like my theory shows. But the star constellation verifies the timing of my theory. So uh, math doesn't lie. We've disqualified 2017, 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022. And that is the very end of Daniel's prophetic generation. Now, um, happening in the world. Well, this is what is known as the tribulation period, a seven-year period. Um, it is the final seven years of Daniel's 70 weeks of years. 
given to him by Gabriel. This 490 total years, seven times seven, 60 weeks of seven years each, 490 total prophetic years. Now, the 490 years started with the decree from Cyrus to uh, Persia to Nehemiah and Ezra and to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the wall in the city. From there, the clock was running, and it says in Daniel, turn over to Daniel real quick with me. Daniel chapter 9. I'll show you something here. Daniel is right after Ezekiel. And Daniel chapter 9, we can see the 70 weeks of years, and that's the foundation of Bible prophecy. You cannot figure out any timing at all until you can solve Daniel's equation. Now, in Daniel 24, it talks about the 70 weeks that are determined for Israel. This would be Israel, biological Israel, and also spiritual Israel. We're all house of Israel. So you have in verse 24, the 70 weeks are given to us and the set along with the seven things they are to accomplish. In verse 25, you have the start of that prophetic clock with the decree. And it says that the wall and the city shall be built again, even in troublous times. In verse 26, it tells us that after three score and two weeks, that's 62 weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. So at the crucifixion, the clock paused, okay, and would not run again until Israel once again had control of Jerusalem, and that would be uh, 1,948 years later, almost 2,000 years later, we have Israel recaptures Jerusalem in June 1967. Now, when the, when the book of Daniel was sealed, and uh, he says to seal it up, when Daniel was asking about what these what these things meant. He's, he was told to seal up the book. And I, I'll find these, these scriptures for you. Um, at some point, I thought I had it marked. Let me grab it for you. The scriptures are vital. They are the most important thing. And that is what we will take time to do for the scriptures. We'll make, Time because there's nothing you can learn nothing without the scriptures. Okay, well, I'm gonna I'm going in my concordance after the word seal because Daniel was told to seal up the book and the prophecy. Okay, Daniel. In Daniel 12, 4, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Okay, that would be our time. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Running to and fro is a travel, international travel. We um, also have the internet, so knowledge is greatly increased in our time, plus we have technology, which is something that has not been here since before the flood. Uh, there was technology introduced here before the flood, and then it was all wiped away. So in 12.4, we see that Daniel is told to seal up the book, even to the time of the end, and that it would be these things would be unsealed to the generation in which they applied. And so now that is what is happening here. It, the crucifixion, the prophetic clock paused with at 434 years or 62 weeks of years. 
And that left eight weeks of years or 56 years remaining. So with that 56 years, it didn't start until an event would would start it. Okay. And that's why nobody could ever find out. Oh, you know, Daniel's equation, it's been sealed by time. And oh, when the right time came, it was unsealed by an event. And that would be the six day war in June, 1967, when Israel recaptured Jerusalem, that restarted the prophetic clock. You had the, the prophecy is for the people and the city together. So once the, the Jewish people and the city came back together again, the prophetic clock began to run again with 56 years. Now you have 56 years of 360 days each. These are Hebrew years that we're talking about here in the scriptures. So you have 56 years of 360 days each that gives you 20,160 days. Okay. If you take, we've got the six day war. We take the day in the middle, June 7th, um, 1967, add 20,160 days. And we find out that the end of the generation, the very end of the prophetic generation is August 17th, 2022. If you, you might be able to hear my grandkids in there, <laughs> in there crying. My daughter's trying to corral them, so I apologize if it gets loud. Um, 20,160 days. You get August 17th, 2022. Well, you know, we took the day in the middle of the six-day war. Uh, so we do have an error factor there of you know, three days on either side or two and a half days, whatever on either side, but we can get really close here. Okay. So we find out that the very end of Daniel's prophetic generation is August 17th, 2022. That was unsealed in June, 1967, but I was, I was six. <laughs> I had to grow up and, and learn and figure all this stuff out. So here we find out the very end is August 17th, 2022. Well, if you back that up by seven years, you can see the tribulation period had to have started in 2015. And as I was able to finally solve this equation in 2016, I was amazed because I watch full time. This is what I do. This is my passion, my obsession to, to learn the word and watch for Jesus. And we were a year into the trip before I ever figured it out because I was hindered by thinking that the rapture of the believers occurs before the seven year tribulation period starts. I've always learned that I've always believed that until it, it just hasn't worked out that way. So we have to be willing to adjust ourselves to the way things are manifesting and a lot of times they won't manifest the way we expect. A lot of people believe that the seven year treaty would start the tribulation period, but that doesn't, uh, that's not the case either. If you look in the scriptures, look at verse 27 in Daniel chapter nine. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. This is the treaty. It's a covenant. Uh, an agreement with hell, it, um, it's for one week, which is seven years, right? It says, and in the midst of the week, the week is not that seven year treaty week. The midst of the week is Daniel's 70th week. So you have a seven year treaty that in the midst, in the mid, in the midpoint of Daniel's final week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. 
And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. There's an overspreading of abominations. They're not building it where they're supposed to. <laughs> they're doing the whole thing all wrong from start to finish. And the temple is probably defiled before it's even completed while it's under construction. Um, the sacrifices and oblations ceasing is not a hard concept to realize when you uh, consider how the world thinks these days. You've got people by the millions are starving to death in the world. You have more people going to bed hungry at night than the entire population of Canada, the USA, and Europe combined. Now, given that, when you have a working, functional temple, there are thousands of animals per day that are slaughtered on the altar. The blood runs like a river through a functional temple. And the world's going to see that as barbaric, okay? And they're going to cry out because as all these animals are just sacrificed and you've got people hungry all over the world, Plus, you've got PETA and all of these animal lovers who are going to say, hey, you know, why does this, why do you have to do this? And there's going to be a tremendous outcry against it, probably. And the Pope snake in a dress, he's going to, you know, he's a people pleaser. <laughs> so he's going to stop the sacrifices and oblations. And that's only one of the overspreading of abominations, okay, that, uh, that are going to happen with this temple. But between now and next July, which looks to be our midpoint, let me, let me show you how we arrived at that. Um, look in Daniel chapter 12. And in verse 12, you see, blessed is he that waiteth. Well, let's start a little bit. Uh, let's look at, start with verse nine. Okay. Uh, he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. He's not allowing Daniel to understand because Daniel, it, it, there's no reason for Daniel to understand. He wasn't going to be here during that time. Many shall be purified and wait, made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand. See, God's not going to show these things to the wicked, but the wise shall understand. If you study and you seek the Lord. He says, seek and you will find. In verse 11, and from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate set up. So those two things are going to happen on the same day is what it's indicating. From the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate set up. The, the abomination that maketh desolate, that's the image of the beast set up in the temple where it does not belong. There shall be 1,290 days. Now, this 1,290 days is broken up uh, this way. The first half of the seven years, you have 1,260 days until your midpoint, which would end up being... Uh, well, I'll show you how we walk through that. Um, let's go ahead and, and follow what Daniel's saying. So on the back end is what he's talking about right now. There is 1,290 days of judgments here. So you're looking at 1,260 days for the trumpet judgments, and that would be the end of your seven years. And then you have 30 days of vile judgments. Remember, you have to have your birth pangs. You have the seals, which have been opening at the rate of one per year since 2013 consistently, one per year. Then the trumpet judgments, if they are equidistant as the seals have been, you will have seven judgments in three and a half years, which is one every six months. Okay, so you have an increase in intensity and frequency, just like birth pangs. And then after those, you have 30 days of vile judgments where seven judgments will pour out on the wicked who have taken the mark for 30 days. That's like one every uh, three or four days 
five days, somewhere in there, three, three or four days. So uh, that's where they are. Wham, 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 you know, like birth pains. And so you have to be, you have to be able to find the pattern of the birth pains. And that is what we have found in, in the seals, the trumpets and the vials. Now, then it says in verse 12 of Daniel 12, blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred five and thirty days. So you've got 1335 days from the midpoint all the way to the very end of the generation. Okay. So the way we figure this out, we take uh, August 17th, 2022, and we subtract 1,335 days to find the very latest our midpoint can land. So we subtract 1,335 days and we get December 19th, 2018. That is the very latest the midpoint can be. You have to have 1,335 days um, and it can't go past August 17th, 2022. So we take August 17th, 2022, subtract 1,335 days and we find that the very latest our midpoint can be is December 19th, 2018. Now, that doesn't mean that's the day the midpoint occurs on. If you do your homework, you find that the two previous temples have both been defiled on the 9th of Av on the Jewish calendar. So if you back up to the 9th of Av in 2018, there's your midpoint. And it shows that the Lord shortened the days by about five months is what's happened. Because your midpoint would fall July 21st, 2018. Now, you, it, you don't just do the calculation and decide that that is it and that's it, okay? All the biblical criteria has to be there. And one required element is a blood moon for the sixth seal. The sixth seal is God's response to the defiling of the temple, okay? So the sixth seal, there is a blood moon and not just a blood moon, the center blood moon of the three blood moon triad that straddles the year 2018 falls six days after the ninth of all, <laughs> after the ninth of all. And it's required. You have to have a blood moon just a very short few days after the temple is defiled. And since both previous temples were defiled on the ninth of Av, there's our pattern. There's our precedence. So we, we pinpoint it on the ninth of Av. Then six days later, you got the sixth seal opens at the center blood moon of the triad. And then for the next six weeks after that, you've got war in heaven. This is going to be amazing. As we see explosions in space and a lot of amazing things because of this war that's happening during that window between July 27th, 2018, when the sixth seal opens, that's where your blood moon appears, and September 9th, when the new moon appears, and your Feast of Trumpets either starts on the 9th or is delayed until the 10th. So, and I, th I really think that there would be no reason to delay the Lord's return once Satan is cast down. So it is scary to think that he's going to be here uh, before Jesus comes, it, possibly as much as six weeks. But I don't really see uh, any reason why the Lord would delay his appearance in the sky after Satan is cast down. Okay. So I think what we've got is a war in heaven. Turn over to turn back over to Revelation chapter 12 and I'll show you something here. In Revelation 12 All right. We see in verse we see in verse 6 that Israel has to flee at the midpoint and after that when they get a clue. 
They're told to flee as soon as the temple's defiled, but many of them don't know that. They don't know what the word has to say, but they will learn in the days ahead. They certainly will. The woman fled into the wilderness, which where she hath a place prepared of God. That's probably Petra in the mountains of Jordan. And that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days, twelve hundred and sixty days. Now that would take them to the end of the trumpet judgments, where at the seventh trumpet, you've probably got another rapture. <laughs> okay. And then at that point, then the vile judgments are all poured out on the wicked for 30 days. Those who took the mark, see, they can't die. Those who take the mark, they can't die. It's going to be incredible because you're going to have this uh, fallen angel show up, Lucifer slash Satan, and he's going to offer a technology that keeps you from dying physically and keeps you from being able to sleep anymore. The word says they have no rest day nor night. And it says that also that they long for death, but death flees from them. This is going to be really amazing. Let me get that scripture for you. Look at Revelation 9, 6. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it. And shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. Straight up. <laughs>